Hi everybody, I am out today because it is another nice day, probably one of our last fall days where we may end up seeing leaves on the trees. The theme of this video today is do I or don't I? And the do I or don't I relates to if I see something that looks like it's potential elder abuse or something that just doesn't look right, do I or don't I say anything? Do I or don't I tell anyone? Do I or don't I make a report? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. My website is Pamela D. Wilson. This is the caregiving chat of the day. Three scenarios from this past week. One was a situation where a son went to his mom's house and all of a sudden she had a change in health condition. She was sitting on the couch and she couldn't get up. Both of her legs were paralyzed. So what did the son do? The son did probably what any good son would do. And he called the paramedics, but the paramedics came out and mom didn't want to go to the hospital emergency room. So what did they do? They told the son, well, your mom seems to know what she's talking about. She seems to be in her own right mind. We're not going to take her. But in the midst of all of that, when our minds are scattered and they're unfocused, what the son forgot to tell the paramedics was, I don't live here full time. I'm just visiting. What happens when I leave? What happens when you leave? And my mom, who seems to be paralyzed and can't get up on the couch, can't go to the restroom, can't take her medications, can't drink and she becomes dehydrated. What happens to my mom because you are saying that she is in her right mind and you're choosing to leave her here? How can that possibly be right? I can tell you that over the years I have done training for police departments, for paramedics, because many of them are unfamiliar in dealing with elderly situations. Many of them don't realize what happens if elderly people don't get the care they need. If she had a stroke, stroke prevention is extremely important. Getting to that hospital in a short period of time can make all the difference in the world. If you leave somebody at home that can't take care of themselves, even though they say that's what they want, what's your responsibility if something happens to them? Scenario number two, neighbor hears some screaming next door, knows that a young daughter has moved back in with her parents because of COVID and all the things that happened, but the screaming's loud and the daughter is threatening the elderly parent. Neighbor thinks, oh my gosh, what do I do? Do I or don't I? Do I or don't I call the police? Should I do anything? What if something happens to this father? What if the daughter does something? What if a week from now, both of these parents are shot dead? Do I or don't I as a neighbor? <clears throat> what I can tell you the neighbor did was they didn't call the police that night, but they did call the police the next day just to make a report, just to put something on the record so that if something happens by that daughter who threatened her elderly parent, at least there's something on the record. Scenario number three for this week is in-home caregivers. In-home caregivers who are in the homes of elderly and who hear and see things. Hear things like a son or a daughter threatening mom or dad. Hear things like mom or dad expressing concern that a son or daughter is stealing money or is threatening them. Here's something from a spouse that says, when you leave, my husband doesn't treat me well. He's very abusive. And the caregiver comes back the next day and that wife has bruises all over her body. Do I or don't I? It really is an ethical choice. And sometimes family members are afraid to do anything. Sometimes in-home caregivers are scared to death to make that report. If you work in healthcare or another field, many of us are mandatory reporters. We don't have a choice, but we do have a choice about how to make that report so that it's presented in the right manner. So that maybe a caregiver isn't seen as complaining about a coworker who doesn't do their job. So that the paramedics and the police get additional training to learn how to advocate for elderly when they don't have the experience. 
we're all going to get old. We are all going to need someone to advocate for us someday. We can't say, I'm 20, this is never going to happen to me. I'm 40, this is never going to happen to me. It is going to happen. We are all going to get old. What happens when you're in that position where you need someone to speak up for you and there's nobody? Return that favor today. Say something, make a report. Don't worry about what can happen to you. Worry about what can happen to that person who has no one to speak up for themselves. Also, seek caregiving education. There's education on my website, my caregiving course called Stay at Home, Taking Care of Elderly Parents, my radio show every Wednesday night. It is called The Caring Generation. A lot of information and subjects that come from caregivers in my support groups and on my website. You can also go to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, check out my blog. There's articles there. If you have ideas for radio shows, for videos, you can click the Contact Me button and send me an email. Have a fabulous day today. Enjoy this beautiful fall weather wherever you are, and I'll see you again soon in another video.